talking about it in just a moment while the other group climbs the ladder we'll in a minute. The very first archaeologists who were here, they understood that the Pueblo people who lived here were directly related to the modern Pueblo people. It really was just ranger lore that created this myth. And this myth is very pervasive. Most people come thinking that the people here just vanished. We know people don't vanish, right? We know that they simply <laughs> move. And that migration, it is a bit odd, and we'll talk a little bit about it. I like talking about the migration away here in this plaza for a variety of reasons. You know, this plaza is really cool in that there's really two plazas like this in all of Mesa Verde. There's one here, and there's one next to the palace at a site called the Fire Temple. When archaeologists excavated the floor of this plaza, they actually found that below there's footings for older rooms, which means that rooms were deconstructed in order to create this open space. So this plaza was probably added right at the end before people moved away. So what do you think a big open plaza like this? Gatherings, community center, probably trade. You know, this would have been the place for the community to gather. Now, we know that the droughts continue, and there's another drought in the 1200s, and that's really devastating, and that's probably the final push that causes Pueblo people to leave. So Pueblo people begin leaving the region in the 1200s, and it's probably in plazas like this where those decisions as communities were made to, to leave. You know, I like to think about all the trade that happened here. Here in our site, we find lots of evidence of cotton, but there's no evidence that cotton was being grown here. There's not enough water. So that's cotton is coming through the trade routes. Yeah, feel free to stand in the shade. It's really hot right now. <laughs> you know, that cotton's probably coming up through the trade routes. So, you know, imagine this. You're here at Mesa Verde. You're a farmer. You're living at Long House. And maybe you're also a weaver. And you come down to the market to get cotton that's being traded in. And with that cotton is not just the, the cotton itself that's coming in, but it's about where that cotton's being grown. So imagine your crops are failing, but you hear of a place down south where people are farming on the Rio Grande. And some archaeologists theorize that in the 1200s, Pueblo people are starting to irrigate down on the floodplains of the Rio Grande. So here you are, dry land farming in a drought, but you hear of a place where they have enough water to grow cotton. What would you want to do? You'd want to head that way. Yeah, we know that the Pueblos down south on the Rio Grande, they become almost twice as large in the 12 and 1300s, showing that the people of Mesa Verde are probably moving down there. Ostensibly what's happening is the same thing as oh, like a, a dust bowl. Right? Think about Oklahoma. It was a great place to farm, but what happened in the 30s? We had droughts, and that pushed people out to a place where they could farm successfully, which was at that time California. But what's happening? California. You know, we have massive drought out there. So, you know, these, these things happen over time. This is really just the story of the Western landscape and how people move over time. So we know that Pueblo people move. When you talk to archaeologists and you ask why Pueblo people left, the archaeologists will always talk about the droughts. Those droughts probably caused people to leave. If you talk to Pueblo people today, why their ancestors left Mesa Verde, they always talk about, well, there's opportunity also. I think you need both, right? There's a push and a pull. And between those two, this whole region, not just the people of Mesa Verde, but about 40 to 50,000 people in this northern reach of the Pueblo world will roll down south and migrate to largely the Rio Grande area, also the Hopi Mesas and some other locations. So we know Pueblo people didn't vanish, they just moved. And I bring that up again because we really have to correct this myth. You know, you might go home and tell people you went to Mesa Verde and you might hear, oh, that's where people disappeared. You know, you can let them know that that was really just ranger lore. It was an unfortunate tale that was perpetuated over and over and over again. You know, Pueblo people, they do come back often to visit their ancestors. 
Um, the cultural connections are strong. The dances that happen in Pueblo Plaza today are the same dances that probably took place here. You know, Pueblo people are highly religious, and, and those things have really lasted, lasted over time. So, you know, feel free to wander through this plaza area. Feel free to take a few last pictures. Um, please ask questions and at your own